Over the past two and a half years, I've worked with around 80 individuals and couples one-on-one -on -one to help them figure out solutions to their problems when it comes to things like spending money, saving money, paying off debt, how they think about money, and everything in between. During that time, I've noticed a lot of overlapping mistakes that are common enough to where I know it's a problem for more than just a few people. I wanna show you some of the biggest money mistakes I've seen that affect not just people who make less money, but even people who make a couple hundred thousand dollars per year. All of the specific stories I mentioned have already been approved to talk about by the individuals. So don't worry, I'm not sharing any top secret info, except for when I tell you about this one group of greasy haired scumbags. I didn't ask for their permission because they take advantage of people, so I don't care about that. A common misconception I hear a lot is that someone that's poor is really bad with money and someone who makes a lot of money is really good with their money. That couldn't be further from the truth. I would argue that the person who makes a lot of money could be just as bad with it as someone who is poor. They can just get away with it for longer because the amount that they have coming in is covering up any underlying money problems. Always remember that there is no correlation between being really good at making money and being really good at managing it or doing the right things with it. So before you start throwing stones at people who have less than you, you might wanna take a very good hard look in the mirror. The first common mistake I see people fall into is buying something without knowing how they're going to pay for it. What I discovered is that a lot of the reason this happens is because it's very easy to get caught up in the moment when money and emotions are involved. It's really difficult sometimes to remove your emotions from large and even small purchases. While I see this a lot with dumb purchases that I'll mention later in the video, I also see it with people who are generous and get enjoyment out of giving money. I recall reviewing this spending for one guy. As we were going through some of his expenses, I saw a huge bill at a restaurant. This isn't necessarily a bad thing at all because I have zero issues with people spending large amounts of money on things that are important to them. But we were trying to get his money situation figured out, so it's my job to just ask the question to understand why. He told me his family family was in town so he wanted to treat everyone to dinner. Next thing you know, he was dishing out $500 to pay for everyone even though none of them expected him to do it and he didn't have the extra money to be able to afford it. This is a very nice thing to do and I am all for giving money and treating other people but there are times in life when you just cannot afford it. I can empathize with this because I am this exact way. If I wasn't careful, then I'd probably give away or spend all of my money on other people, which in part stems from growing up very, very poor. He knew beforehand that he was going to pay for everyone, but he failed to take into account the rest of his financial situation to decide whether or not he could actually afford it. Spoiler alert, he couldn't. So it got charged to his credit card and he ended up paying interest on the money for multiple months since he didn't pay it off. Guys and gals, listen up. Spending money is perfectly fine as long as you are in a financial position to be able to afford it and you understand the impact it's going to have on your overall financial health. Before I tell you about the next mistake this guy made, please help support Little Miss Molly and this channel by hitting that thumbs up button and sharing the video with someone you think needs to see it. One of the reasons he said he didn't feel so bad about it was because he was at least getting credit card reward points. This is another excuse I hear from some people as to why they feel more comfortable with spending money. It's more of a coping mechanism to make them feel better about spending more than they can afford. Yes, credit card rewards are great when you're the one coming out ahead. Unfortunately, this is exactly what credit card companies want us to do because it's how they drain so many people's bank accounts. There's some psychological warfare going on here. These points become addicting and you start spending a little more here and a little more there because, you know, more points. You're playing with fire when you do this sort of thing. Don't let the tail wag the dog here by allowing the credit card companies to dictate how you spend your money. You need to be in control of how you spend your money. People like us charge our credit cards based on money we are already going to spend that we 100% know can be paid off at the end of the month. An added bonus is that we get reward points. We don't allow the reward points to dictate whether or not we spend money and how much we spend. While he did get $10 back, he still spent $500 more than he could afford, so did he really come out ahead? 
The answer is no. All right, before I go over the next one, it's getting hot in here, so we gotta take this off. Savings accounts are for saving, checking accounts are for spending. If you told me a few years ago that some people didn't know the difference, I would have laughed at you. But holy smokes, this is a bigger problem than I realized. I usually see it bubble up with couples, but I've had a few single people do this as well, and it causes so many issues. Paychecks get deposited into one checking account, then money never gets distributed to places it needs to go. What we end up with is a big blob of money in one account that everyone just spends and saves out of. It's like leaving out the candy bowl for Halloween and expecting the trick or treaters to not come along, grab a handful, then run off. This morphs into a huge mess of overspending and not having enough money to pay for certain future expenses. I had one couple that was making $250,000 per year combined with no debt other than their home, which they could afford with no issue. The problem was that they always ended the month with barely any money in their account and essentially $0 saved. Look, our money is like a bunch of little kids that need to be told what to do when it comes to chores around the house. If you don't give any of them direction, then you're gonna have little Billy digging holes in the backyard and little Sally painting a mural on your front door. We have to give every dollar a job so it knows what to do. The first way to do this is to set up multiple bank accounts. If you're a couple, then it's helpful to have something like a shared checking account for everyday household spending, a shared savings account, and individual checking accounts for personal spending that the other cannot question. From there, everything possible needs to be automated because it works miracles. All of the money flows into the checking account, then automatically gets distributed to places it needs to go. Auto payments are turned on for everything, so you don't have to go through the annoying process of logging into all your accounts to click the pay button, and auto deposits need to be set up for your investment accounts. Getting this process in place fixed 70% of the money problems that this couple had. The rest of their issues were psychological things that we had to work on. Single people, you should be doing the same darn thing as well. Then, once you get married, Married, you can implement it in your relationship with your significant other, which will help avoid a whole heck of a lot of future arguments. But hold on, there is a right and wrong way to do this though. So don't just go whipping out a flowchart of how it all works like your partner is an emotionless robot. If you're a weirdo like me, then this would be how you'd want to approach it. But not all of our significant others speak nerd talk, so it needs to be done in a way that they understand and can get excited about. If you want to keep yourself safe from people, people sharing your private info and passwords on the dark web, and prevent data brokers from selling your personal info on the internet, then get a free 14-day trial to Aura using the link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, and signing up for that 14-day free trial does help support Molly and the channel, so thank you so much in advance. Have you ever heard of an abundance mindset? Yeah, well, it's a problem, and I see it get a lot of people into financial trouble. I think the concept is great in theory, and I am all for thinking big when it comes to our finances, but it can get really, really bad really quickly if it's done the wrong way. When I hear an online guru dork talk about an abundance mindset, it's usually followed up by some other BS about a vision board and manifesting more money in your life. I don't know what it is, but anytime I hear a grown woman say the word manifest, I already know they're gonna be goofy as f Like it gives me the vibe like you grew up on Harry Potter and you believe in magic. So. Find out. And the way you manifest more money in your life is to spend money like you already have it because surely it's going to come back to you if you put that out into the world, right? A great way to do that is to give these abundance gurus money for their online course or coaching. Meanwhile, they're sitting in a back room sniffing their own farts, laughing at how gullible you are. It's like those multi-level marketing schemes. You only hear from the successful people and never from the other thousands and thousands of people that it didn't work out for. I talked to a sweet younger girl who fell for this bullshit from some grifter because she was in a very vulnerable place in her life. She started buying a bunch of new clothes to start attracting higher value people into her life. She started paying a coach to help her raise her quote unquote vibration, which would act like a money magnet. What happened? Loads of cash and credit card debt was used to fund this quote unquote new lifestyle because the quote unquote universe was going to pay it all back to her. Well, it never worked out and she finally realized that. Guys, you're not off the hook on this one either. I see the same damn 
thing happen to men, but in a different manly man form. I know a guy personally who is brainwashed by these long haired hippie guru dudes that talk about cryptocurrency, day trading, prepping for the end of the world and manifesting. I actually almost infiltrated one of these groups to gather some info and put them all on blast, but something came up so I had to cancel and they haven't invited me back. I can't stand these idiot gurus because they prey on weak and vulnerable people all disguised and wrapped up in a way to quote unquote, improve yourself. As I said before, I am all for spending money, but not until you've actually acquired the freaking money. Manifesting wealth by spending money ignores the most important part. And that's doing the damn work to be able to afford those things. That's how you attract more wealth in your life. Please, for God's sakes, stop falling for what these tricksters are pushing on you. It's only going to leave you broke and them driving their stupid expensive cars and living in their McMansions. I just can't do it with these freaking abundance gurus and these financial advisors who charge a percentage based on assets under management. Those are the two things that you will just see me go off the absolute rails about. I guess that and universal life insurance. Oh, don't even get me started. When I work with people, I really try to listen to not only what they're saying, but how they say it. Many times I notice that when someone talks about certain money problems, they try to cover up the bad behavior by laughing or joking about it. Ugh, I just love my football. So when those Cleveland Browns draft a new player, I have to go get their jersey to show my support and go out to the bar with my buddies to watch every single game. <laughs> When I go to the mall, I just love playing dress up like when I was a little kid. I go get myself some new makeup and outfits because it's just fun to play. Plus, I can't wear the same outfit twice in a row. <laughs> I can't do that. Who would do that? <laughs> Okay, A, as an ex-Cleveland Browns fan, they always have and always will suck. But more importantly, you don't have the money to spend on a jersey or that $80 at the bar every single Sunday. And B, you're not impressing anyone by playing dress up as an adult when you can't afford to buy that many pairs of clothes. Now, I'm not gonna psychoanalyze <laughs> these two people that I just made up because there's always more to this story that I'd need to know first. But the overall lesson is that the reason for how we act around money the way that we talk about money, the way that we think about money, and the way that we spend money goes way beyond what we see on the surface. There's always something else going on underneath. It usually stems from things like how we grew up and the stories that we tell ourselves about money. The good news is that with a little bit of work, most of these money mistakes can be overcome. I'm thinking about maybe starting a new show where I help people figure out their money problems and release it here on YouTube. If you wanna be a part of the test group for that, then I'll throw a link in the description to fill out a form to sign up. Help support Molly and the channel by hitting that thumbs up button and sharing the video with someone you think needs to see it. In the description are more ways to help support the channel as well. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.